Okay, in our last lesson we were looking at probability distributions. This is the probability distribution uh, for the following experiment. The experiment is uh, I count the number of tails on one flip of a coin. Okay, so what can happen on one flip of a coin if I'm counting the number of tails? Well, I could have zero tails or one tail. The probability that on one flip of a coin I have zero tails is a half and the probability on one flip of a coin that I have one tail is a half. And I can increase that to say two flips of a coin. On two flips of a coin these probabilities have changed a little bit. Of course the possible outcomes I could have zero tails or one tail or two tails on two flips of a coin. On two flips of a coin the probability that I get zero tails is a quarter. The probability I get one tail is a half. The probability that I get two tails is a quarter as well. You know, on three flips of a coin, there are now four possible outcomes. I could have zero tails, one tail, two tails, three tails. The probability of getting no tails on three flips of a coin is one eighth. The probability of getting one tail on three flips of a coin is three eighths there, 0 0.375 probability of getting two tails on two flips of a coin is also 0 0.375 and the probability of getting three tails on three flips of a coin is a quarter. Okay, a couple of things to note. Notice the symmetry of, of, of the probability distribution. The symmetry as it, it every time I change this number of trials the symmetry is kept. It's still symmetrical. It's still a symmetrical distribution. It's peaking a little bit in the middle um, that's always going to be the case. And if I kind of jump from three trials and, and kind of slowly move across to say 25 trials, what you'll see is the shape kind of always being symmetrical as we move across. And we're getting closer to something called, you know, what's called a normal distribution, which we're going to talk about in this lesson. So you can see here the shape of this thing. It kind of peaks in the middle. It's absolutely symmetrical. And if I kept going, increasing the number of trials, this is 25 flips of a coin. You know, the probability of getting 11 tails on 25 flips of a coin is a little bit bigger than an eighth. That's what that's saying there. Okay, I'd have to change these values here to see exactly what it is, but it's a bit more than an eighth. Okay. And this is getting closer and closer to something called a normal distribution. And in this class, I really want to talk a little bit about normal distributions. So there's something called the normal probability distribution, which is just a particular type of probability distribution, but it occurs uh, often. So suppose I was to find one of the following, the heights of all adults in the world. If I was to find the heights of all the adults in the world and draw a probability distribution, I would find that the shape would be something like that, where this central value would be the mean height of all the adults in the world. Uh, that's going to be my center value. That you would find that in this case would be the mean height. So most people are about average height. Most adults are average height. And what you have as you move off here towards very tall, you know, that's average height. Down here we'd have our heights. Over here we'd have our probabilities along that axis. So as we increase our height, we're getting, you know, up here we're getting very, very, very tall people where there's fewer and fewer of those. And very, 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 very short people, well, there's fewer and fewer of those. Most people are average height. And in fact, you'd find, you know, a few other things. You'd find that uh, quite a high percentage are grouped in around quite closely to the average height. The same with the weight. If instead of height I did the weight of all adults in the world, you know, you'd find again the same thing. Most people are average weight. And then as you get heavier and heavier and heavier, fewer and fewer people are very, very heavy and fewer and fewer people are very very light. Same things with IQ. If I looked at the IQ scores for all adults in the world, you would get the same. Most people, so the peak of this thing, most people would have average IQ. 
going off up here we're getting to people with a very high IQ and there are very few of those and off here people with very low IQ very few of those as well the maximum running speed of all adults in the world would be the same it's a normal distribution and this shape is important in our course the number of hours of screen screen time per week of people in Ireland would be again the same thing most people spend an average number of time on their screen these distributions are what we call normal distributions and normal distribution have a very particular shape and there's a way to describe this shape this shape is you know looks a bit like this but it can be broader or it can be narrower but again key details about here this is right in the middle is the mean that's right in there is the mean the curve is continuous it means there's no breaks in it there's no gaps the curve is bell shaped this is the description of this type of shape is a bell shape so this curve is a bell shape it's a bell shaped curve and that's what it looks like the curve is symmetrical about the mean so there's my mean right in the middle you know if I draw a vertical line down through the mean that's my line of symmetry here it's symmetrical it's a symmetrical distribution and again we spoke a little bit about those in our last class the mean median and mode are all located at the center so the center is not only the mean it's also the median and the mode okay the curve is unimodal mean there's one mode okay and the total area under the curve is equal to 1. So if I was going to uh, just measure the whole area under the curve, that's equal to 1. So you need to know these properties of a normal distribution. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and you're expected to know those. So make sure you know those six properties of a normal distribution. Okay? so you need to learn those things by heart sit down figure them out practice drawing the curve you know practice drawing the curve google it look up normal distributions uh, you'll see them all over the place okay very uh, they're very commonly occurring things in nature normal distributions practice drawing the curve learn all the properties in the next lesson I'm gonna look at problem solving with the normal distribution.